members who were both church members and uh, persons of property. Instead, any freeman could uh, be a, a juror. And there was also talk at the time that the girls were beginning to accuse more and more uh, important people and that this kind of brought about uh, a disinterest uh, by the uh, higher authorities in pursuing the matter. But it just did seem to uh, stop. And uh, the governor, the new governor who came from uh, England um, in uh, 1692, uh, Sir William Phipps, uh, issued a general jail delivery which said that those persons still in jail if they paid their fees in those days if you were in jail you had to pay for the chains that were put on you as well as the food that you uh, ate uh, once the fees were paid the people could go free and after that most of the people did go free with the exception of at least one woman who couldn't pay her fees and died in jail what happened to some of the people that were set free well, since there were, you know, 200 plus uh, people uh, who were accused, and since many of those who were accused tended to be from the lower social strata, we lose a lot of them in history. We don't know what happens to them. Uh, Tatuba, for example, we know she was in jail. Uh, Reverend Paris didn't want her back, and we're told traditionally that for her jail fees, somebody else bought her and she goes into the obscurity of history and we never hear of her again. Uh, some of the other uh, individuals um, move out of town. Uh, Sarah Cloyce, the other sister of Rebecca Nurse, uh, moves to Framingham with her husband. Uh, a lot of people were very much affected by the hysteria afterwards. There was a little girl somewhere around the age of three or four years old who was accused of practicing witchcraft. Uh, her mother uh, died as a result of the witchcraft, and uh, her name, Dorsey Good, uh, we're told that once she was released from incarceration of something like eight months in jail, uh, that she was mentally unbalanced for the rest of her life. So jail did have a, a, a very uh, somber uh, effect on a lot of the people who had been thrown into there for many months on end. and. Uh, beginning in 1703 and culminating in 1711, a lot of the more well-to-do families, or at least the more cohesive families, uh, began petitioning the general court for redress of grievances, for uh, some kind of uh, financial remuneration for those who had uh, uh, been killed by the state. And at least a few of those persons were given uh, uh, monetary uh, recompense. What can you show us here um, that deals with witchcraft in the past? Well, we collect here things having to do with uh, witchcraft that are on paper. Uh, and I have a, a few uh, uh, manuscript volumes that pertain to the witchcraft hysteria, as with, uh, well as uh, some of the very early imprints about uh, the witchcraft. And we also have a few artifacts that we excavated from uh, the Reverend Samuel Paris house where the witchcraft hysteria began. Can you show us some of these artifacts? Sure, would you? Well, we're now in the non-public section of the archives, and this is our uh, vault where we keep uh, the most important records and some of the very rare books. And uh, let me get a couple for you. Can I hold something? Sure, why don't you hold on to that. What I've got is two examples of some of the imprints that we have concerning the witchcraft. And this little volume here is one of the rarest of the books about the witchcraft. And it's called A Modest Inquiry into the Nature of Witchcraft. And it was written in 1697 by Reverend John Hale. He was one of the ministers in the local area. And it was his explanation of what actually happened during the witchcraft hysteria. And he was a very cautious man because although he wrote it in 1697, uh, he made sure that the book wouldn't be published until after he died because he was afraid he was going to ruffle a few feathers uh, on what he said. When you read it today, however, it sounds like a very modest um, approach to the witchcraft. And what he says basically is that the reasons things went wrong in Salem during the trials was the fact that mistaken principles had been used in discovering who were witches. And he said you should go back to the scriptures to understand who witches were 
and not use uh, English precedents. There are only four copies of this book. Could you tell us just a little bit more about what it says? Well, um, uh, Hale was minister at Beverly, and he was one of those ministers locally who got caught up in the witchcraft. Uh, the local ministers tended to be much more caught up in what was happening than those ministers in the Boston area. As a matter of fact, contrary to, I think, popular belief, ministers like Increase Mather and Cotton Mather, the famous Boston family, uh, weren't uh, real witch finders. If anything, they were trying to tell the civil authorities to try not to go so fast. Increase Mather at one point said, it's better to let uh, ten possible witches go free than to execute one person for practicing witch who was innocent. Uh, and Hale, once he got back to a little form of reality, uh, wanted to try to find out what had actually happened. And this was his, his very uh, hot uh, rendering uh, examination of what did happen so that others wouldn't fall into the trap that he had fallen into uh, during the witchcraft hysteria. What was the biblical approach to this book? Uh, well, what he did was he took a look at scriptures and how scriptures identified who witches were and how to know them. And what Hale said was during the witchcraft hysteria, old English precedences had been used to discover witches. Uh, one means was the use of trying to find devil marks. And a devil mark was, according to English tradition, a mark that the devil gave a witch that the witch excuse me, the witch had an imp or a familiar that usually was unseen. Sometimes it could be seen. It was often in the form of a yellow bird or a black cat or something like that. And this little familiar, which did all sorts of devilment for the witch, had to suck the lifeblood out of the witch in order to get energy. So this witch tit or witch mark was always on uh, one of the witches. Uh, and according to English precedents, all you had to do was examine a person's body, and if you found a mark that looked like it might be a devil's mark, you would take a common pin, stick it. If the person bled, cried out, it was natural. If they didn't bleed, didn't cry out, didn't have any sensation, chances are it was a devil's mark. Unfortunately, many moles and things like that on a body don't have nerve endings on them, so you can stick it all you want and it won't have any reaction. So Hale said this kind of evidence was not valid and therefore should be uh, uh, gotten rid of. What is your opinion of Hale's biblical approach to this subject? I don't really believe in literal witchcraft, so my idea of his uh, showing it in scriptures uh, uh, is that it's all wet. Uh, what I do think is that Hale was a very... Um, uh, good man who was trying to find out what had happened according to the way he thought things out. And by his trying to reason what had brought about the witchcraft, uh, he was doing something that most of the other people contemporary to him hadn't done. And what he was trying to do was a very good thing. Um, I think what he did was not necessarily uh, very valid, but he thought it was. We're here in Peabody, Massachusetts, a few miles from where the witchcraft trials took place, and a few miles also from the new Salem, Massachusetts. We're here with Pastor Michael McCumbie of the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Pastor McCumbie, could you tell us a little bit about witchcraft in this area? I believe as a pastor, I believe that uh, the Word of God teaches that uh, witchcraft is an abomination unto God, but uh, the... Uh, area in which we live here uh, is very much a, uh, an occult uh, witchcraft uh, haven. Uh, there is a uh, the official logo and emblem for Salem, Massachusetts itself is a witch and has always been known as the witch city. Uh, to an outsider, this is very much a tourist attraction and a drawing card. There's in the city of Salem the Witch House, the uh, Witch Museum, the Witch Dungeon, uh, and uh, of course there's uh, uh, an official city witch by the name of Lori Cabot who has her own witch shop, which she claims, of course, to be... Uh, a white witch, but uh, of course we believe that uh, the only 
which mention in the word